All right guys, welcome back to Greg's Turtle Haven. Today we're gonna to be talking about one of my favorites and a, probably a turtle you've seen on my channel a bunch of times. Let's talk about the Gulf Coast box turtles. Some of my personal favorites, they are the titans of all the box turtles. They're the biggest, they're the most aquatic. They're so awesome. So today let's get into it. Let's talk about the Gulf Coast box turtles and what makes them one of my personal favorites and one of the coolest living box turtles that we have here in North America. All right, so you may know that over the past week, it's been pretty crazy here. I've had Aquascape here building an ecosystem stream pond and uh, kind of with all that stuff going on, um, a lot of stuff kind of got quiet and we had a lot of rain over the last couple days and one of the things that rain does is it brings out baby turtles and I was checking out my uh, cooter and Gulf Coast box turtle enclosure and I looked this morning and I found two baby Gulf Coast box turtles and I uh, couldn't be more stoked. You know, Gulf Coast box turtles, uh, they nest uh, sometimes twice a year. Uh, I'm willing to bet I have two females and I'm willing to bet that each one of them laid a uh, separate nest because I did get some baby gulfs uh, earlier this year. And now I've got two more to add to the, uh, to the crew. So I'm pretty stoked on that. Um, and it's always fun to find ground hatched, you know, babies. I, I like incubating and I like getting that stuff, but ground hatch is like, it's like Christmas and Easter, man. You just kind of like, have this like little gift that pops up out of the ground and then you got to run around and find it. So fun, man. So this is one of the baby Gulf Coast box turtles and he is absolutely tiny. Just, it's a miracle to even be able to see these guys on the ground. And um, so I have them in a little separate small enclosure with some water, some pine needles, some plants, uh, just to kind of let them get acclimated and feel safe. That's the biggest thing with baby box turtles is they just have to feel safe, have to have some shelter. And then over time, they'll start to kind of hunt down little tiny worms and insects, and then they'll start to grow. So awesome little guy. We're gonna put him up and then let's get into uh, talking about Gulf Coast box turtles. All right, so one of my favorite things about this enclosure is the fact that in addition to the aquatic and basking turtles that I have in here, is I have a crew of Gulf Coast box turtles. Now, Gulf Coast box turtles are not only the largest box turtle in North America, they're also the most aquatic. So they actually spend a lot of time in the water. Uh, I'll actually see them sleep in the water overnight. When it gets cold, they'll overwinter underwater. Uh, they'll also hunt down there. I've seen them crawl across the bottom, almost like a musk turtle, kind of investigating between you know, rocks and in the gravel and in the sand. So they're, they're really well adapted to almost a 50-50 sometimes uh, life on land and in the water, which is just really cool. And, you know, it's very different from, you know, Eastern box turtle um, who, Eastern box turtles may sometimes live in swampy areas or the edges of floodplains, but they don't really spend that much time in the water. Not like a Gulf Coast box turtle does. And Gulf Coast box turtles will actually, in some places, they'll actually flee on land into the water, which is really cool. I mean, I've, I've, I'm dying to get down to the Apalachicola National Forest and actually see that in person. Uh, I've heard about it many times. I've heard that that is ground zero for seeing awesome Gulf Coast box turtles. There are different populations of Gulf Coast box turtle. There's the Panhandle of Florida, the Apalachicola National Forest variety, which is probably, I would say, maybe the most well-known. Those are the ones that you see a lot of photos of from people herping and cruising for snakes because they just come across so many of these guys. Um, they're the ones that, some of them look like a faded or watered down Florida box turtle. Some of them are completely black. I actually have a couple of them that are just almost black. And then some of them can actually be really intricately colored. And in fact, I actually have a female right here. And she is absolutely beautiful. And I got, I got her with this entire crew actually um, from a buddy of mine. He was moving and he needed a new home for these guys. And they just have been the greatest box turtles. I mean, this female has laid eggs. Those babies up there came from this girl and just absolutely beautiful. And she's pretty big, she's probably not done growing and you can kind of see that, you know, she's still got a little bit of growth left, but just a beautiful, I love that yellow color. That yellow coloration is just so beautiful. Um, and then almost like a tan with like just little flecks and lines and just an awesome turtle. We're gonna put her down and watch her kind of. <laughs> that little tail. There you go, girl. 
yeah, I just love these guys, and they're just, um, they're so easy to care for. Um, like most box turtles, if you get uh, yourself a Gulf Coast box turtle, they'll eat things like worms and uh, insects and arthropods, and I mean, these guys spend most of their day actually foraging. So when they're not foraging and in the heat of the day, they'll go put themselves, you know, kind of like she's doing. She's hanging out in this little shady corner back here, but they'll hide out underneath plants and roots and, uh, or they'll spend half the day in the water. I've got a couple males and a couple of those males will just hang out in the water all day. And that's what makes them so unique. So the other thing that makes them unique is that they're believed to be an integrate or hybrid form of the extinct box turtle, uh, Terrapenne putnami, Putnam's box turtle, uh, which once had a large range and the core of its range was somewhere around the Florida Panhandle. And I think the current working theory is that uh, what we see as Gulf Coast box turtles now is actually where the extinct Putnam's box turtle has hybridized or integrated with the existing and the surrounding forms. So in some areas they would be crossed with like a Florida box turtle, some areas of the Eastern, some areas when you get a little bit west towards the Mississippi, they would cross with the uh, three-toed box turtle. And what you get from that is you get uh, large Gulf Coast box turtles with different characteristics. So sometimes you get ones um, from near that Florida range where they look like the female I just showed you. They've got like a radiating pattern. They've got two stripes on the side of the face. Um, and you know, sometimes they'll even show uh, signs of that dorsal keel a little bit. And then you get, oh, <laughs> And you get some of them that look like a big Eastern box turtle and they've got the bright colors and the same pattern and a lot of the stuff, but they're just a big Gulf Coast box turtle. And then you get some that have that like lovely kind of creamy tan phase with yellows and oranges. And you know, they can look like a really big uh, three-toed box turtle. So uh, there's a lot going on there with the genetics. It's way over my head. I'm not the one to figure that out. Um, and I know there's a lot of people that have been working on it and there's work been done on it. So uh, if that interests you, I'd definitely uh, Google Putnam I, Putnam's box turtle, and uh, I'll Google the uh, Gulf Coast box turtle and you'll get a mountain of information and theories and might want to wade into that on a late night. Might not, I don't know, man. <laughs> distinguishing features of the Gulf Coast box turtle is they have a tendency to really have these flared out almost gutter like marginals and I, I think it's theorized that those may be for stability in water because they will go into creeks they'll go into the edges of the Apalachicola River and water's edge and uh, it helps kind of stabilize them out since they don't really have much webbing on the feet to speak of or any and um, kind of helps them when they're kind of teeter-tottering in the water when they swim one thing these turtles are known for is for the males to sometimes develop these like whitish heads or sometimes even with blue on them. And uh, as you can see right here, this male has like a big white beak and the males will develop these huge cusps right on the end of the beak. And uh, they'll actually use that in combat and they'll break off the marginals of other males um, to kind of assert dominance and fight over females and you know, all the stuff that male turtles like to do in the breeding season. But I mean, it's just really, really pretty and I don't know if the camera can pick this up, but he's got little subtle hints of blue kind of around that white on his face. Just the contrast of that dark shell and bright yellow underside. I mean, just a beautiful turtle and he just loves the water. He's just gonna take off into the pond. <laughs> like I said, they're not a great swimmer. I've seen him swim and I've also seen him kind of run across the bottom. They almost seem a little bit better at the running across the bottom. All right, so now you've seen a group of Panhandle, Panhandle, Gulf Coast box turtles. Let's go take a look at my other group, which are from more of the uh, Mississippi, Louisiana area. All right, so this particular group of Gulf Coast box turtles is a bit different. They're a bit flatter, they're a bit tanner. Um, and these are the box turtles that you're gonna find in those really swampy areas around that Gulf area near uh, Mississippi, Louisiana. They really like just saturated ground, standing water. A lot of people have kind of affectionately called them the swamp monsters of the box turtles. And you can see why they sometimes refer to these as the tan phase because look at this female, just that lovely like a horn color, just light tan and just just so round too, like that round shape is just so cool. And just a really pretty box turtle. 
And you can actually see if you look at the top of her shell, it's actually worn smooth near the rear of it because the male just males are just constantly mounting these guys to uh, reproduce and sire offspring. And uh, the females, you know, <laughs> if they can't shake them off, then they kind of get worn down a little bit. But just a beautiful box turtle. Stick her right there. I think. Let's dig around in this yucca. Yucca is not fun. It's actually pretty sharp. So you can see there's another, there's another female hiding under this yucca plant and they love these. They love the way they like kind of overhang. Ow, 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 it stabbed me. So these box turtles love the way the yucca kind of overhangs that little swampy area uh, where they like to soak and kind of forage around. And there's actually a good amount of amphibians in here. There's green frogs, leopard frogs, uh, two and three line salamanders in here. So this has really kind of attracted a lot of that upland and woodland uh, amphibian life. So you like the Gulf Coast box turtle, you want to find one as a pet. Do your research, take your time and make sure that you get a captive bred box turtle. Um, I've been hesitant to make videos on box turtles just because of the tendency for the for people to be interested in a box turtle but then they want to just pick one up off the road and take it home and that's never a good idea. Uh, wild box turtles need to stay wild. We don't have very many left in some areas and um, picking them up and taking them home while it might seem like you're helping out and rescuing them. Um, if you don't have the right setup you're really not doing it any favors and you're better off just to move it across to the other side. So compared to the eastern box turtle, the Gulf Coast box turtle is gigantic. It is much, much larger. This one, pretty good sized male Gulf Coast box turtle. Definitely not even the biggest. Um, I believe the record is somewhere near 11 inches. These guys can be like gigantic. Gulf Coast box turtles, like most other box turtles, are equipped with that hinge and that helps them close up and uh, kind of deter predators from prying them open. Um, especially little things like raccoons who use those little claws to kind of get to everything. Good thing box turtles have that hinge because it helps save their butt uh, probably many times throughout their lives. You can see that the male right here is much more elongate, has those big gutter marginals, and then this female here, much tighter, rounder shape, a little bit more of a uh, kind of a round hamburger kind of shape. And uh, there you go, you can see kind of inside there. She likes to just hide up under there, so we're gonna set her where she was at. So in my enclosure, I like to provide them lots of places to hide. Um, I have a lot of little things that they can kind of get under. Um, when I rake my yard, all the leaves go back into here uh, for two reasons. So to give them cover and to give them insulation during the winter. And then also this promotes uh, earthworms, one of their favorite foods. So you'll see these guys in the early morning kind of raking these leaves aside and getting to those uh, big night crawlers and earthworms uh, to forage on. This is one of my favorite hides right here. I love this. Uh, I picked up this uh, section of a palm tree, uh, one of my trips down to Florida on my buddy Bob's place on the beach, and it's just turned into the best hide. And you can see there's a couple Gulf Coast box turtles hanging out under here, and they just get under here. Nice little tight space, gives them a safe, you know, get away from any predators, also from the weather. And in the winter time, they're actually gonna dig down pretty deep under here. So I'm gonna give them a little bit more privacy. All right, so that's it. That's uh, the Gulf Coast box turtle. Uh, one of my personal favorites. I've loved them ever since I was a kid. Uh, they're just so neat. So if you get a chance, um, check them out. Look them up online, watch some videos. There's a lot of other cool videos on Gulf Coast box turtles. And um, thank you guys for watching this video. Drop a like, comment, subscribe. Please share this video. Show it with your other friends that love turtles. Show it with people that don't love turtles. I think they maybe need to see it a little bit so they can get a little bit love too. Thank you guys. I'll catch you on the next one. And you guys take care. Peace.